Hey, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm Christine Gritman, of course, and this is Let's Talk About Brand. I do the show every Friday at 12 noon Eastern time, live on Facebook and on Twitter. But today's show is a little bit different. If you are joining us for the first time, if this is your first episode of Let's Talk About Brand, Welcome, we love you, this is gonna be a great show, but I do need to let you know that it is different from our usual format. Normally, it is me interviewing one guest on one specific topic of branding that they are a recognized expert on. But today, today, this week, I've decided to open it up to some people from my own wonderful social media community to just see, to just have kind of a general conversation on branding. So again, these people are experts. These people are fabulous professionals that you will learn a lot from. But I wanted to let you know that this is kind of an open discussion with people from my online community. And if you are here watching us live, and if you are, in the social media and branding sphere and feel that you have something to add to the conversation, you know, let us know. I can give you the link to the green room. Ooh, ooh. But in the meantime, we've got a few fabulous people here who I'm so grateful joined us today. So I'm going to uh, bring them on now and introduce them. Hey, Ben. <laughs> Hi. So um, I'm gonna have you introduce yourselves one by one. So I'm gonna start with Troy, just cause you're on the top here. <laughs> What's up world, digital world? I'm Troy Sandage. I am the original strategy hacker. Ooh. I specialize in on-demand strategy solutions to help you scale, be sustainable and successful in every avenue that you're trying to do. And I'm humbled to be on this show. Y'all know how much I love Christine. I'm so happy to be on the show. Yay! And in fact, we're gonna have a link in the comments at some point so that people can check out my past shows, including one that Troy was on this past January. So thank you for that. All right, Deb, you are up. Hi, everybody. I'm Deb Coleman. I'm a content conversion strategist and a copywriter. I help businesses and brands get clear about their messaging and use their content so that more of their ideal customers choose them. Nice. And that is what it's I'm all about. I'm thrilled to be here, too. I really enjoyed your Twitter chat this week, and it was really fun to be able to hop in here and have a more deep conversation about brand. And you always bring it. And I really appreciate that because a chat is nothing without the participants. And speaking of that, another wonderful participant that I'm so happy to have with me so much and who makes my Twitter life better is Bonnie. So, hey, Bonnie, introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Bonnie Wilson. I am a community engagement specialist. I have a passion for getting in there, talking to people and making that one-on-one -on -one connection from a brand to a consumer. I was working in the endurance sports industry until COVID happened and endurance sports didn't, but I'm still very, <laughs> very passionate is an about endurance getting that sport. <laughs> right now it is, but I'm passionate about getting out there and talking to people and inspiring them on the next step of their journey. I love that. And so many people are just entering the next step of their journey. Now there's, it's been a really interesting reckoning. I feel like the past uh, year and change, because I feel like the importance of personal brand has become clear and the importance of being online has become clear. People just kind of who who didn't make that shift got kind of left behind. And also a lot of people, because what they were doing stopped working out for obvious reasons. Maybe it was on pause. Maybe they got laid off, you know, all these things. It was an incredible opportunity for people to discover and take charge of their next steps. Um, and, and having a personal brand and understanding a personal brand is such a key and important part of that. So we were talking a little bit before we went live about some things that are especially interesting to you guys. And one thing that came up was the power of community. They say that, you know, you um, one saying that I really like is you weave the net that catches you. So um, when you're not in trouble, you really are building up those relationships so that when you actually do, you know, need something or when it's time to make a change, you, you've got a little bit of security. You've got that net under you. So I'd love to hear from each of you your thoughts on um, building community, specifically building community around your personal brand and how personal brands can help with that. So whoever's up for bringing their thoughts, go for it. Okay. I'm happy to share. Oh, <laughs> go ahead, Troy. Rock, paper, scissors, go ahead. <laughs> I think, you know, many times talking, I know everyone else can talk this higher level than I am. Community for me is very intimate. It's very personal. And I think once you get past a few layers of just 
scheduling, consistency, you know, you get your confidence up. Um, what's left, you know, is that connection, uh, is that people are just drawn to you that if something happens and all of us have experiences that times with because of COVID, the things that aftermath, uh, just 2020 in general, 2020, we're still adjusting, is that we need a break, we need a pause. And if we are a pause, your communities are very people who will come in and ask, hey, how are you doing? Yeah. They're not so just on, this person always gives me good tweets. They always have a great presence on live. And it's just a one way. A community is really a two way where it's you and you're having that one on one interaction with thousands upon thousands upon thousands, or maybe, you know, some people upon millions of individuals. And I think that's so powerful, you know, and making you know you're not alone. I think a lot of brands, big and small, are recognizing, hey, what's COVID proof? community. When I can't show up as often, when I need to reduce my schedule, when I can't do my live show, maybe we have to stop the podcast. Maybe I just couldn't, you know, we feel that pressure as many who are watching our social media managers and we know that transition and they're trying to do what's best for their personal life. Your community is still there. They're going to pivot with if you. If you're doing they're it right, your community is still there. with you for sure. So I think that's where a lot of brands need to harness that power because it's not just about the intimate downloads and sales and communication engagement. It's the deeper meaning that when something happens, they're still there for you. That's beautiful. And that speaks volumes too about it not just being transactional because community is not just transactional or at least not when it's when it's done right. So uh, Deb, you were talking about community before. Let's, let's hear your thoughts on, um, on what that means even. Sure. I love it. And I love what you shared, Troy. Connection is a big piece for me as well, I think for all of us. And that community does happen, as you were sharing, really one-on-one. -on -one. And that when we can stay in that space where we're speaking to one person, whether it's a tweet or an email, that we're not one to many, even though it's reaching many people, it has to have that that connection that happens one person at a time. And it's also, as, as I think you touched on this as well, about listening to the people and giving first instead of, you know, promoting or, or, or thinking we, you know, we need to reach our ideal people to build our business. It's about, I want to know what you're about. I want to know what, what you do online and what you're, what you value, because that helps get me to create a picture of you and your brand and whether I want to work with you versus, you know, the hundreds or thousands of other people who do similar work to us. Our brand is what gets us to be the one who gets chosen. Yeah. And you can't just show up with your message and your goal and expect that to build community. There's that additional layer there of, of the personal element, as you both said. Now, Bonnie, you, as you mentioned, have been in an industry that sort of had to change a bit during this time. So I'm sure a lot has been shown about who's got a community and who hasn't and how to maintain that during downtime. So I'd love to hear kind of your insights on community and how they may have shifted even during this time. I had this conversation with a friend of mine the other day, and really what we saw, it was about who was uplifting the community. The people that were up there uplifting each other, giving each other hope, going, hey, we know things suck right now, but what can we do to help you? Those were the, those were the situations where you saw communities start thriving again. You saw communities start connecting again. When we stopped making it about us and made it about the campfire around us, Everyone laughs because I use this campfire sentiment all the time. It works. We would rather we would rather make it about the campfire around us instead of just pouring fuel on the fire. Yeah. What What does everyone around us need? We saw that, and people just started gravitating. There's hope. There's There's connection. People were just thriving on that one on one communication. Absolutely. And that makes just such such a huge difference because it shows that you don't just matter to people for what you do or what you can do for them. It shows that you matter because a connection has been made. And that's so key. Um, another thing that we talked about a little bit in the green herb, I know Troy, the original strategy hack hacker, wanted to talk about strategy. So here's that's kind of a delicate thing when you look at it in terms of community, because on the one hand, there's you need it to be genuine, you need it to be personal, you need it to not just be transactional. But then the strategy element comes in. 
And so there's that delicate balance of having it be strategic yet genuine. So I'd love to hear about that uh, that balance there from anyone who wants to start. I mentioned Troy, but anyone who wants to start, because all of us have had to deal with that balance of strategy and community because we're all clearly having public presences. So how do you deal with that balance of strategy? <laughs> I guess I can go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, I'm going to say this word and most people know me. I don't know what word I'm going to say, but I don't mean as a gimmick and it's value. But many times we always want to say give value and we got to make sure we're getting, we're receiving enough value back. Yeah. It's a two way to make the community strategically. We want to give as much as we can. I absolutely love the campfire. Oh, Thank you for that, Jim. Um, but we have to also make sure that as we're giving, it's going to benefit us. Not that it has to be a monetary thing, but that you know it's worth us doing it. And sometimes we can misconstrue and say, hey, we're trying to stay humble. We're trying to stay small. That doesn't mean that you still can't expect or demand your community to give you back something in return, whether it's just respect, support, you know, a listening ear, it's a two-way communication. It's a relationship, as Jessica Phillips would always say. Yes. And I would kind of cap with saying, you know, I have this Clover framework and I apply this with my community. Am I the C for clarity? Am I clear about what I want this community to be? Am I clear about how I want to show up, how I want to serve this community? Can I leverage, the L being leveraged, can I leverage my community to help other people within my community expand as well? You give and pay it forward. They give and pay it forward. You give and pay it forward. And it's going to scale. But then also, how can I leverage to make sure I can always show up? If I'm at a place where I am at a you know mental health, emotional health, support, financial, everything else in good standings, that means I can always show up consistently for my community. If I'm running on E, I can't show up as my best self for my community. The O being optimization, there's going to be times where they may know you as a Twitter chat person. They may know you as a live person, a podcast person, different ways you show up in your community and your mediums and choice that something may happen where you have to make a pivot, a shift for your personal reasons, for your business reasons. And they should hopefully understand that. I've already touched on the value, but the other part of that V is the vision. They want to see where are we going next? Where are we going next? And can we paint that picture for them with the community? Obviously executing, again, we have to make sure that communication is there. It's not great that, hey, I hit X amount of followers, I'm good. No, your community still needs you to show up as often as you can, and then obviously the results. And that's based off your own personal preference. Some people may want a good monetary balance for that. Other people may just want to see the numbers of the follower account come up. Some people may want to see, hey, how's my watch time? Whatever those benchmarks are, that's yours and yours alone, just make sure it's an equal value, not just for your own benefit, but others as well. I want to I want to touch on value there because I think that that's really important that people realize that your community's value is not just in dollars and cents. Because first of all, it comes like if you have people who adore you and are gunning for you and are you know spreading the word about you. You know, it's hard. people don't necessarily make the connection. People are like, all these people are following me, but none of them are paying me. No, that's what results in people hearing about you who will pay you. Um, and, and, you know, realizing the value of having people who think you're great and support you and have your back, realizing the value of people who value what you're giving them is just really key towards making sure that it's not transactional, realizing that value has so many different meanings. Um, so Deb or Bonnie, I'd love to hear, I mean, any, any thoughts that this has brought up in you, um, including, you know, how, how you define kind of the value of your community as well. If so, for me, it's important. And I have uh, some, a formula with C's as well. And clarity is mine first as I'm sure it I is for many formula, of us. I need a formula, man. Everyone's got a formula. I'm, I'm just throwing spaghetti at the wall. I love this. Go for it. Oh, I don't, I don't <laughs> know about that, but um, to be really clear about what it is that our community needs and not, you know, what, not so much what we value, well, that's certainly important, but what do they value? What do they need? What, what are, what, 
how do we find that place where we can meet that? And as Troy was saying too, that it is a two way process and strategy, you know, is not a bad word. Like a lot of people tend to think of it as manipulating or, or hacks or that sort of thing. And it's not it, much like what uh, you're laughing. Cause I'm sure you hear it all the time, but it's, it's, you need to have a strategy or, or you are just throwing spaghetti at the wall. And although you said that, I know that's not how you work, Christine, uh, but it is how many people work. They just go hop online and just hang out and have fun. And that's all great but they're not building a business at the same time because they don't have any plan around what their intention is. And you're so right. It's not about the transaction or the sale because our best supporters are often those people who will never buy from us. Maybe they do work similar to what we do or they just don't have the need, but they can be our greatest supporters. They can increase our visibility. They can just refer and, and it, it, and become part of our community that, that's a lot of what eventually builds businesses for the long haul and not the short sale. I love how you phrased that. And that's so important. Too many people are prioritizing kind of the wrong, the wrong angle of that. <laughs> and then they wonder why it's not working, especially on social. Social media is social. It is about community. Is it about, it is about connection. It's not a direct, um, it's not just about sales. Uh, so, so Bonnie, I would love to hear your thoughts on kind of the value of community and what that means to you and also strategy. I think the key thing is listening to that community, figuring out what they need. And my mom's going to laugh if she hears this because this, she's been in sales for longer, longer than I've been alive, basically. Mm -hmm. And her, her, one of her favorite sayings is give them the pickle. Ooh. So when, when you're a community manager, you're listening to your community, figuring out what they need and giving them that extra, giving them that connection, giving them that pickle and letting them know, hey, I'm here for you. But you have to listen to the community and adjust your strategy accordingly. Yes. It's so funny. I was like, I wonder what the pickle is. <laughs> so the pickle is kind of the bonus on the side of the sandwich plate. Yeah, and that, that pickle for like a community manager, it's that connection. It's that one-on-one. -on -one. Like, for example, in endurance sports, say someone posts in one of our groups saying, hey, I just finished my first, let's just throw a Spartan race out there. Coming on as the brand and saying, hey, we're proud of you. Let us know what else we can do to help. Yeah, showing that support without a transactional element to it is just so important and so key. Um, and just so knowing what the community needs. Yes, but because you're listening to them and not just kind of dictating. Um, so I would love to hear, I want to take it way back. I want to take it way back to the basics and hear how each of you defines A, what a personal brand is, B, why it matters, and C, what you think, how, how you describe yours or how you think others might describe yours. So we've been kind of going in order. So let's let's just stick to that. Let's just start with Troy. Like hit us with your your personal brand basics here. Oh, okay. A personal brand know, is your digital question. identity. That you, I know, I know. Uh, your personal brand is your own identity of how you want to show up online. You control the narrative. It's your show. It's your story. You control every aspect of it. It's whatever you want the perception of the value to be. Because sometimes we have our certain thing that we have in our head and the perception doesn't match. So it's aligning that perception that you want to be perceived outwardly to the public to know and show and hopefully love and support. Yeah. Um, I forgot the next one. I know the last one, the which, is, which is, um, you know, the, the point of a personal brand, why it's important to have one. And then also yours. The point of having a personal brand for a few reasons, and this is just me from my only personal perspective too, is that no matter what happens in your professional career, your personal brand is always there. It's your infinite ownership of your own rights of your own real estate in the digital world. And it's essential to always have a plug in it, not to just have a LinkedIn profile or a Twitter account. It's way deeper than that. Uh, but just making that there, you know, water it every so often, evolve it, adapt it is very essential. 
Um, pe many people, unfortunately, have lost jobs, have pivoted, have made shifts. But your personal brand is going to show that extended value. And it's always there. And in many cases, especially now, your personal brand is an extension of who you work for, who you work with. It's a benefit. They're not only choosing you. They're choosing your personal brand. So you got leverage, baby. And I guess I would say as far as number uh, letter C for me, um, I just see my brand as just an evolution. Um, I think I've always been a little short at the core. Um, Five-year-old short, probably. I'd go for that date <laughs> internally. Uh, but I think it's just an always evolving thing that I never was just, I'm only this one thing. I'm going to ex expand as years go on, as my interests expand, as life changes, different things come up. So I think just giving myself grace to always be a student, forever student of discovering who Troy is now, learning from who Troy was, and looking toward the future of who Troy could become. And that, to me, is what I'm trying to make my personal brand to be. I like it. I like it. I also want to point out that we, we have a comment here that apparently Alex has actually heard the pickle thing. <laughs> it was in a sales video that, that she watched, which I think is fantastic. Um, all right. So then um, I'd love to hear from Deb. Again, the three questions are, and it's, it's, a, it's a bear. What's a personal brand? Why does it matter? And a little bit about the personal brand of Deb. Okay, let's see. No pressure. Personal brand, I see it. <laughs> I see it as the full expression of who we are as a person and as a business. And it is really that culmination of how we communicate what's important to us and what we stand for and how we like to go about serving if we're in the service-based businesses you know what what how if we're a supporter that like that needs to come through if we care about certain things or the way in which something happens you know there are a lot of people who do what we do but they don't do it the way that we do it and the delivery and the 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 kind of space that you create when you're working with other businesses and brands is part of the process of how they choose who they want to be with and who can best solve the problem the way they want it solved, right? A lot of us can teach similar material, but we do it differently, you know, or we support people differently. And that's really critical to bring into what we, what we do. And I think the more vulnerable we can be, the better. Everyone has to figure out what that line is, what's yeah. important, what to feel private. I mean, but the more we can share those other pieces, as we all know, it's always the stuff that people pay attention to. It is. Right? That that email that was more personal that you might have even thought, I don't know if I should bother people with this. It's the one that people come out of the woodwork saying, we're here. We care about you. I mean, I've had that happen so many times that just shocked me. And it wouldn't, and it leads to connection. So to get to your part two of why is this important is it's that's why people connect with us. Yes. It's our personal brand. It's it's who we are. And the more we bring that into what we do, like we do, and I know you do so well, Christine, with your image, your <laughs> face. So, <laughs> people know it's you. And they and we don't, you know, we want to make it easy for them to remember us. We don't want them to see you know a business name or say wait a minute who is that i mean i don't know if you've experienced i've gotten emails from people that I, that doesn't have any identifying information it has the logo and i think i don't know who this is who are you and why are you now, emailing me right, yeah. that i get the, on this list the connection is gone and i've actually reached out and said i didn't realize this was you but all it would have taken was a little headshot or your name or something. So for me, it's all about connection because I believe that is really the, I don't know, the lifeblood of our business is, is you know, how we connect with others and how we help connect them to the solution they're searching for. Uh, for me, I don't know. I feel like I take cues of what my personal brand is from what, people say back to me because that's really yes. the part that matters the most is how do they experience me? Hopefully it's how I want to be conveying myself as well. And there are a lot of things, um, you know, that I'm nurturing them, that I have a nice way of breaking things down into simple, 
steps that they can implement and um, that they, that I have humor and that I like to keep things fun and light. And for the people that I love to work with, that's important to them. And yes, I can do my thing. Like that hopefully is just a given for all of us that we can do the thing that they need help with, but it's all that, those other pieces that really create the personal brand. Oh, I love that. Yeah. It is just so much about the other person's perception and the other person's experience. And it's, it's, we can, obviously we should be involved, especially from a strategic perspective, but it really, you know, whether it lands or, or flops is really down to if what we get across to other people when they're on the receiving end of us. <laughs> All right. So Bonnie, again, the, the million dollar question is what is a personal brand? Why does it matter? And what is Bonnie's brand? I think a personal brand, it's all those little individual pieces that make you stand out from someone, from the person right next to you. Mm -hmm. What do you value? What things bring you joy? What fills your cup? What sparks your fire? And how do you bring that across to other people? I mean, do you like to do community service? Do you like to just be out there like you are, Christine, and communicate with everybody and engage and make that connection do you are you into that strategy are you in what are you into what sparks that fire what fills your cup and makes you go i'm, I'm happy to get online for the day i'm ready to go I'm, so i think that's all part of your personal brand and part of that too is how authentic you are with that how transparent how real you are because i think for a lot of people it's still a challenge to really embrace who you are Yes. And be willing to throw it out there and say, here I am, take all my chaos, whether you like it or not. And I think it's important because that's how people make that connection with you. They make that one-on-one -on -one connection based on, hey, look, she's passionate about, like, I, I do a lot of work with best friends, Animal Society. Oh, I've had them. people go, oh, you're passionate about animals. I, I want to connect with you. Or you're passionate about connecting with a community or that's that's what makes the personal brand happen and that's why it's so important because you make those connections yeah. i always joke that my personal brand is chaos because i'm in, into a little bit of everything and i'm always upfront about it that makes it real I'm kind, I'm, I'm kind of this chaotic little nerd who i'm like i'm talking about social media i'm talking about wrestling i'm talking about cats i'm talking <laughs> Well, nin American Ninja Warrior starts into May. I'll be talking about that too. I think for me, it's like, for me, that authenticity and being out there is just such a big part of it. I mean, and it's sometimes it's a challenge because sometimes, sometimes you get blowback. Sometimes people don't like what they see and they tell you. And then it's just knowing yourself enough to know, hey, I'm constantly evolving, constantly changing. Some people are going to fall off the journey. Some people are going to get on the journey with you and keeping that in the back of your head. Yeah, because that's the thing about listening. It's like, on the one hand, you want to listen to the people who matter and mm -hmm. their needs, but you want to not listen to the people who don't matter because you're not for them. Yeah, you're, 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 your audience is always changing. I think that's the way to describe it. Your audience is always going to change as your brand evolves, both as a business brand and a professional brand, a personal brand. And just having that in the back of your head and knowing that the audience is going to change and always having an ear to the ground knowing, okay, there's changes happening. What can I do to be better? Or where, where, where can I change? What can I learn from this? How do I go forward? Perfect. I love this. I'm so glad that all of you came on. This makes me so happy. I'm so glad that I got to have deeper conversations with you than we do just, you know, in the Twitter chat or whatever. Speaking of the Twitter chat, everyone should join Chat About Brand on Tuesdays at noon Eastern time where, where these lovely folks and many more uh, talk about or chat about brand. All right, so we are gonna be wrapping up. So I would love each of you to tell the good people at home where and how they should find you. Troy, you're up. That's my cue, find Troy at find Troy. You'll find me. <laughs> yes, find Troy at find Troy is everywhere. All right, Deb. That's awesome, Troy. <laughs> um, you can find me pretty much everywhere online as Deb Coleman, C-O-M-A-N. Uh, or Deb Coleman writing on some of the social media channels. Awesome. All right, Bonnie. Twitter, be so socials on Twitter, Instagram, 
warning, Instagram is usually cats and running. Be so social on the run. I, I'm not into the running, but I'm there for the for the cats, I guess. Put put some dogs in there. Let's let's do a let's do a collab. <laughs> All right, and I, of course, am Christine Gritman. You can find me everywhere. Uh, C. Gritman, Christine Gritman, Inc. I'm a, li I'm a little mixed up. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for, for coming on. Um, I wanted to remind everyone that this was an unusual show, but I think it worked out so well, you guys. Normally, it is a one-on-one -on -one interview show, and I also have a chat so don't forget about the chat. Tuesdays at noon Eastern time, I have a Twitter chat chat about brand and it is always on the same topic as the friday live show it's just the tuesday chat doesn't have a guest it's all about the community of which those lovely people you just saw are a key part so next tuesday our chat is going to be about branding with visuals it doesn't just mean make everything red there's so much more to it and we're going to be discussing what more there is to it on friday at this on this lovely show with the fabulous Annette McDonald, the founder of Easel. So you're definitely going to want to check that out. The chat is Tuesdays at 12 noon Eastern. The show is uh, <laughs> the show is Friday at 12 noon Eastern. I like keeping it simple. I like I like noon. So definitely join us for both of those. And I believe there is also a link in the comments if you want to catch up on past episodes of the show and past moments of the chat. Thanks so much for being here. Bye.